Welcome to another edition of Northern Heat. I'm Bob Lennon, President of Thermwood Canada, host for the show. Our special guest today, Tracy Clinch. Hi, Bob. How you doing, Tracy? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? Not bad at all. So you're home for a visit. You're home to see mom and dad. And I dragged you into the studio here for an interview. I did. It was my Aunt Anne's birthday yesterday, so we had a nice family dinner. So oh. I drove up yesterday. Excellent. Excellent. So let's talk about you a little bit. That's why you're here. So you're CEO and president of Mazatec in Instruments. Instruments. Tell us a little bit about this company. So Mazatec was started about 13 years ago to address issues in production for fragile containers. So we do sensors inside of replicas of any type of fragile container that can be damaged in production. So we put sensors on the insides of exact replicas of bottles, cans, things like that, vials for pharmaceutical. We put those in, in the line and we measure where damage could happen to those products so that companies can make their lines more efficient. Is this all in the food, pharmaceutical industry? So we have a we have two divisions. We have our industrial division, what we call our industrial division. So on the industrial side, we do cans, bottles, vials, uh, aerosols, anything in container form. And on the food side, we do eggs, potatoes, avocados, citrus, all with the same technology. So any type of fragile food good that can be damaged in production or any type of container that can be damaged in production. All in New Brunswick? All in New Brunswick, yeah. yeah. And you ship all over the world? Yeah, so we're 13 years old and we have uh, more than almost 500 systems in 41 countries. And again, here's another story that, you know, of a a, uh, a small company in New Brunswick that grows to that size. Everything is out of here and it's amazing technology and you're shipping it all over the world and nobody knows about you. Yeah, we opened up. <laughs> I guess that's true. Some people know, but, yeah. but I guess we don't have a lot of uh, high speed lines and it's really important that you have a high speed line to justify the expense of the systems. Uh, so we don't have a lot of high speed lines in Atlantic Canada. So most of where we have our products, we do actual testing, videos, marketing, things like that. So the data we share with those cl clients that let, let us go in there and do those types of things. Uh, so most of our products, we do 95% export. So most of our products are shipped all over the world. And it's just amazing. And, and, you know, we talked a little bit about this before we started and, and the fact that there's a lot of great companies in the province and all kinds of expertise in our province, but we don't network enough and we don't know enough about each other. So that leads into my next question is that you've just recently won an award through Atlantic Business Magazine. I think it's Atlantic Business Magazine, right? Yeah. That uh, you are uh, were voted in as one of the top 25 most powerful women in Atlantic Canada. Congratulations. Thanks very much. So... How'd you get there? <laughs> <laughs> so as I was mentioning about Mazatec, Mazatec's 13 years old and, and uh, we have just broken into some new verticals and things are still growing. Uh, in my spare time, I've done some work with some different boards around the province. So one of the boards that I'm doing work with is the New Brunswick Health Research Foundation. So in the research and innovation space, there are quite a few organizations that are doing fantastic work. So over the past three years, I've been doing quite a bit of and paying quite a bit of attention to that whole ecosystem and who's doing what and where and trying uh, as best we can to make sure that health research has the funding and the projects it needs in order to be able to help our, our healthcare system in innovative ways. So uh, really helping promote the health research that's going on, but also um, assisting in trying to expand that mandate to involve some innovation that could uh, make changes to healthcare and really make a difference in the, in the health outcomes for New Brunswickers. So I've taken some time out of my personal time and dedicated it to that space and trying to make that, um, and trying to make that, more effective. Um, and I think the combination of both Mazatec, I do uh, quite a bit of coaching on the side, uh, the boards that I work with, uh, I think the combination of all of those things led to that nomination. Um, well, totally amazing. And the fact that, uh, you know, you grew up down the street from me and that you're from Bathurst, this is even, <laughs> and this is even better, you know, and, and it's the fact that, that we're able to, uh, uh, to grow people like you in our province is, is, is just totally amazing. So, you know, one of the other questions I have is that what's the networking around for uh, a businesswoman to be able to make it 
in Atlantic Canada? What's your support? Is there any, or, or how, how do you get there? I think Atlantic Canada is a really unique opportunity for people who living in Atlantic Canada presents really unique opportunities for those who want to start businesses because we are relatively small, 800 and almost 30,000 people in the province of New Brunswick. If you want to start a business here, all of the same supports that you would find in Ontario actually exist in New Brunswick. I think the challenge for new businesses is figuring out where those opportunities are and sourcing them at the right time. So if you're in startup mode, there's a whole set of things to do in startup mode. If you're in commercialization mode, there's a whole set of things that you can do to get support in commercialization mode. If you want to expand, things like that. So I think part of the challenge is really navigating the ecosystem to figure out where all of those opportunities are and making sure that you're taking advantage of them uh, at that time. So that speaks to the financial support. Yeah. In terms of like the networking support, um, I've been really fortunate. So Technology Venture Corporation is the major investor in Mazatec, and that's led by Susan Hicks. And she is an incredible mentor for a lot of women and men around the province. Um, the Technology Venture Corporation was part of uh, John Manship's uh, legacy after he sold Spilo in Moncton. So. Okay. So the, that venture corporation, and that's a very small venture group, relatively speaking. So they're very supportive. And we have a lot of crossover with a few of our sister companies. So there's a network that's been built among among those sister companies to be able to help support each other as well. So one thing I'm hearing from that is the fact that we're small yeah. is helpful. It's very advantageous, very advantageous, because you can, you can ask you know people who are in your space. You know people who have been through what you've been through, and you can access those points uh, quite easily if you if you reach out and if, if you're willing to put yourself out there. And that's the big thing. You know, we can't, and we are kind of a, of a society, or and we have a culture in New Brunswick that we're willing to give, but we don't always, you know, give out, mm -hmm. and so that makes it difficult for others to say, "Yeah, I can help." Yeah, it, it's a. I think it's just a mindset. You have to be really willing to open yourself up to knowing that you don't know everything and that somebody has been here before. And if you're willing to open yourself up to the possibility that you could learn something, there's always something to learn. And six degrees of separation doesn't work in this province, anyways. Everybody yeah, knows each other. Six degrees of separation in this province. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be careful. Two, yeah, three. no, no, no. <laughs> if you go far enough, you'll find a lake. There, are almost maybe. I'll give you one. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that being is good and bad. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that, so what I'm hearing you say too, is that create your networks and go out there and be open right. about it and, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. There are lots of people willing to give help and there are lots of organizations that are, are set up to help. So, uh, so for example, uh, I had, a meeting with somebody at Venn Innovations last week uh, and Barb Ells works there and she is, she knows the entire ecosystem. Like she knows everybody who's where, what they're doing. So I tend to have, you know, buy her lunch once a month or once a quarter or however often we can get together, none, none during the pandemic, but yeah. uh, we tend to get together just so that I can see what's going on and what's happening in the ecosystem. And she's so willing and giving of her time. And I, I probably could name easily 10 more people like that who all are very helpful when it comes to uh, understanding what's going on and who can help who, where you could find partnerships, where there's crossover opportunities. So yeah, I think you just have to be willing to put yourself out there. Which is not and easy. no, 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 exactly. And I was talking to uh, a couple of young entrepreneurs uh, about a month ago, and they were just in a startup, and they were asking me all kinds of questions because we've gone through a startup, you know, it's fifteen years ago too, uh, but we still went through a startup, and and they were asking all kinds of questions because they just didn't know. Right. And so I think that uh, you know, if having setting up your network and being able to ask those questions is a great thing. Yeah, it definitely is. It, it, I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? Somebody says they don't know or they don't want to help you. So you just move on to the next person. But I've, I could tell you right now that's never happened to me. Well, no. And, and especially in, the, you might get that if you're outside of the Maritimes. Yeah. But in the Maritimes, there's, you know, we are a culture of everybody wants to help each other out. So the big thing is ask the question and somebody be standing on your doorstep and, and the next thing you know, it'll be somebody else on your doorstep and there'll be somebody else on your doorstep and then you have a crowd wanting to, to back you up and do whatever that you want to do. Right. 
So again, congratulations on the award that you got. The fact that you're from Bathurst is even better. I think that that's great. You know, promote the North Shore. Even if you move to the South, I understand. Yeah, but you do come home, so that's uh, that's good. But uh, Bathurst is my favorite place on earth. So the more that you travel outside of the province and outside of Canada, the more you realize how lucky you really are to live here. Well, I uh, totally agree with you. I can't disagree there. So again, congratulations and uh, keep up the good work on, on what you're doing. And then we'll uh, we'll keep on following you and see what else you're going to end up doing with this. Thanks. I really appreciate you having me. Good. There we are. Another edition of Northern Heat for this week. The place you come to listen to the stories that haven't been discovered yet.